Hey you guys, hey everybody. John and Allison here from Spoken Garden and we're here to help you become a better gardener. Today we're taking cordy line cuttings of this gorgeous can-can cordy line. Yep, we're gonna go over what we have here, how we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna take care of it and you get the guys get to watch. Yeah, let's get started. Let's do this. So guys, here we are. Here's our can-can australis, our cordy line australis. So this plant we actually dug up out of our backyard of our old house and we put it in this pot and we brought it over here to uh, Allison's mom's house and we weren't sure that it had made it through the winter. We had a really hard winter. The whole top died back. And so if I tip this over here, I'm gonna show you real quick. You can see inside here, this is the original stem. We cut it back here a little while ago. We made a video about that and we'll have that either up in the screen for you to click on or down in the description of the video. So we cut it back because um, we started seeing little nodules pop out and we weren't sure if they were latent buds or whatever, but look how much this has grown. These are all adventitious latent buds that have started growing up from the base all by themselves. The plant is trying to reestablish itself. So we can't have all this mass grow together like this and still have a healthy, happy plant. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna take each one of these larger ones that have the developed leaves. We're gonna literally cut these out, treat them with a root tone, um, a root hormone, and we're gonna make our own cuttings. Now, we've never done this before. Um, this is something that is not uh, called out in the literature at all. And so this is something that we're just gonna try because we can, we have the opportunity and we want to show you guys what we're doing and how it goes. So that's what we're doing today. So guys, with timing and us doing this today instead of like uh, earlier in the spring, later in the summer, these, uh, these little shoots, all these buds and these leaves, they're really immature, they're actively growing, they have a better chance of actually rooting under these conditions than if we waited a couple months and they got a lot bigger. They wouldn't be as immature, they wouldn't have that immature fast growth that we need to get the roots to grow on these and to have brand new individual plants. So that's why we're doing this right now. Um, Again, there's no literature for us to reference to tell you to go look at um, and to study yourself to do what we're gonna do here today. So um, this is brand new territory. It's gonna be fun and exciting. So uh, I talked to you about timing and what we're gonna do. Okay, so supplies. First off, you're gonna need root hormone. And this is what we have here. This is, this is garden safe. Uh, root hormone and this is what we've got off of uh, Amazon. We'll have a link down below for you in the description You want to check it out great stuff. It's helped us root uh, It's helped us root uh, What is it lavender and rosemary and uh, all sorts of like sage our hot lips I mean we've rooted a lot of different plants with this so and started new cuttings and grow new plants with this So definitely good stuff. We know it works next after you get the rooting hormone What you're gonna need is you're gonna need a medium to plant these new cuttings into after you dip them and stick them, type right? of soil or perlite or something We're gonna use for this experiment and what we're doing today. We're gonna use just regular old potting soil It's a three-way mix of perlite bark and um, peat moss and that's all it is and we've got it already in our little uh, uh, we've got it already here in our uh, containers, our little pots. It's been pre-moistened, we're ready to go. Next, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need something. In this case, you're gonna need something sharp to cut these out and get a little piece, make sure I get a little piece of that stem, and we'll show you that here in a minute. Um, but also to you know nicely get all of these new leaves and the stems off of there without damaging them, and then get a piece of this stem off there to then uh, plant or you know dip and stick into this soil. So you're gonna need something sharp to do that with. Now, lastly, what you're gonna need for supplies is you're gonna need something, and we have here our little dibbies, you're gonna need something to actually make holes to prep these before you actually start cutting, uh, taking your cuttings from something like this and then putting them in the soil. It's always good to make your holes, pre-do your holes in the soil before you start taking the cuttings you're dipping and sticking. It just makes it a lot easier. Plus, you wanna pre-do your holes because when you take the cuttings, um, if you don't pre-do your holes, what happens is, is you're gonna push that uh, cutting down into the soil and as you push it into the soil, the soil's literally gonna strip away that rooting hormone. You don't want it to do that because it'll uh, lessen the ability of the cutting to actually produce roots. Uh, your survivability of your cuttings goes way down. So pre-do your holes. So the tool we have to pre-do our holes here is our, our product, uh, shameless plug here, our little Dibby tool, and it's a seed sowing tool and seed transplanting tool, if you haven't heard about it. And you can check it out at our Etsy shop. We'll have a link down below for that uh, at our Spoken Garden Etsy shop. These are seed sowing and seed transplanting tools. They have graduated markings on them. So we can use those to, and I have a couple 
right here. We have a couple right here. And you can just take them and you can just make holes with them. And it's really fun and easy, it goes really fast. Um, this is just something we like to use. But also, we've got a newer product from the Little Dibby. We've got the Dibby XL we're gonna be releasing here in about a month. So we wanted to let you guys know, our audience know, that we, these are coming up and these are just a lot bigger. And these are just, these are really cool. So here's the Dibby XL and here's the Little Dibby, just to give you a, a size difference there. So I'm gonna put this down. So this same thing can be used for, just stick that end in there, stick that seed sewing end in there and make, pre-make your holes for your cuttings pretty fast and easy. Now a stick or even a, uh, a pen end will do the same thing for this, but if you're seed sewing, um, these are great because they have graduated markings for the depths, so it makes it really easy. Just figure out what depth you need in half inch, eighth of an inch, um, you know, three quarters of an inch, and then you can just make your holes real fast and you'll get that seed depth uh, right every single time. So, all right, so enough of that, enough of the plug. Let's get to taking the cuttings. All right, guys, we're down here on the ground to give you a better angle of what we're actually gonna do here. I've got my cutting tool, I've got my knife. Uh, sharpened it, it's nice and sharp. Just gotta be careful here. So what we're gonna do is, is I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to come in, I'm gonna cut away down off the bark of this old stem. I'm gonna cut away around here and then I'm gonna cut away on this side over here on the bark and I'm gonna remove both of these two buds right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove both of these and then um, we will separate those um, after it's been removed and then we'll uh, show you, we're gonna go through and remove all these and then we'll dip and stick. So, but first let's, uh, let's take a look and you guys can see how we're gonna do this. So yeah guys, I'm just coming in here. I'm just lightly cutting around, breaking that. First I'm breaking through the bark on this stem and I'm slowly coming around here getting underneath here all right oh yeah that really actually cut in fairly easy and I can already tell there's moisture in here there's actively growing tissue uh, just below the bark of this uh, of this stem and that's a good sign because that means we have actively growing tissue so I'm just gonna grab on to these two buds here and I'm gonna kind of start digging in here oh wow so there we go, guys. I'm gonna try and make as clean of a, a, a cut I, as I can here, because the cleaner the cut, the better the rooting is gonna happen. There you go. I don't know if you guys can see that, but just scored right around this on the stem, removed these two. You can see we got two buds. One was growing just underneath the other. And then if I turn this a little bit, there's, there's the stem tissue. This is where we want the uh, roots to grow from so we kind of need to be a little fast about this we don't want this area to desiccate we don't want it to dry out too much because that means the cells will be dead and we want as many cells alive after we cut it so we can get as many roots to grow as possible so that's literally what i'm going to go do go around this stem and just start doing so our second one can do the same thing I'm just going to come in here and score around these two buds i'm doing this one and this one just going to score my best around here cut in and I am trying to go down a little bit too into the meat of the stem because I want to take out a little bit of that tissue with it because I don't want to really cut away this new, this, these buds away from that stem tissue because that's where they're actively growing from. And that's, that's their structure. This is literally the new plant. So I don't want to do that. I want to give it, I want to leave those stems alone for the active growing areas. And I want to create a new crown for this plant to grow its new roots from. Now, if you guys are trying this, be very careful with your knives. Go slow. Don't want you to cut yourselves. Almost there. There we go. All right, we did it. Look at that. See, and there's, see, there's the actively growing pieces right here, you know, these stems and then they're coming out of this tissue, so I don't wanna really disturb the tissue just around them. I'm going around them and I'm trying to get a chunk so then they have a nice crown, a new crown to grow from, and that's, that's what we're going for. Pretty cool, so let's get to it. Let's knock this out.
Okay, you guys, so we're over here in the shade. We've moved all the cute new cuttings because we were actually in direct sunlight. When, and so we kind of had to hurry at the end because the yeah. sun came out. Yeah, we and it wanna, just was like direct. Yeah, like, we want to. We don't want direct sunlight on these new cuttings because they're so vulnerable. They literally were removed from their home, from that yeah. stem. And so keep the stress level down on any cuttings. And part of that is to keep them out of full sun. So, so right, it's a good tip going forward. Yep. So if you're thinking of doing this, make sure that it's not direct sunlight like it was for us. Yeah. Um, and maybe do this in a shadier area. Yep. Um, now these Cordyline Australis, these are actually hardy in zones nine through 11. So we're gonna need to baby these. We're actually in zone eight B here and ours seem to do very well in containers. Yeah, our regular Cordy, and in our, the our, I guess regular, our non-cutting sized Cordy lines do fine in containers and in the ground. But yeah, we had that hard freeze last mm -hmm. year, uh, this past year. So it, we're, we're right on the cusp, kind of, we're kind of pushing the limits. Yeah, we are. But so, um, but these should do well over the summer to get them to root, which yeah. is our goal. So, so what we're going to yeah. do is check back with you guys in a couple of weeks. We've got some care tips Sean's going to share um, yeah. going forward, right? Yeah. So what you want to do is make sure um, that these are cuttings. Again, keeping that stress level uh, way down low. Um, keep them in a mostly shaded area or full shade area. It ha needs to have good airflow. So. Um, the soil doesn't get moldy or the leaves don't uh, get any kind of crazy funguses or uh, it attracts any insects because now these plants are stressed. They're under very extreme stress. Um, they're all in new homes. So you want to keep the soil moist, but you don't want to keep it wet all the time. So you're going to have to check it either on a daily basis or every couple days to make sure that the soil down below, uh, the, the soil here is moist. And all you need to do is just kind of just get your get your finger in here and just check it. Get down below, maybe about a half an inch to an inch, and just check it and see if there's any moisture down there. If there isn't, water them. Yep. And when you water these, because they have no root system, they don't have that structure, that that stability yet, that anchoring. So what you're going to need to do is get a mister or lightly water them with something that's not going to dislodge them because it's easy to dislodge these, and you don't want to do that when those roots are developing. Yeah, hey, you know, if you got any comments or questions about what you saw here today, go ahead and leave them down below. We love hearing from you. And make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already so you get updates on our latest videos. Yeah, that's a wrap. So again, thank you for being here and stay tuned yep. for our next video coming up very soon. Yep. Bye, you guys. Bye-bye.